Greetings everyone. In today's video, I'm going to just briefly explain how to get custom gloves meshes through the um, software package so that it uses the hand animations for the Bannerlord game. Um, so thank you for watching and, and if you have any questions, just um, ask below. All right, so if you don't know the uh, zip file with the link below, um, you will find a um, couple of files in there. Uh, one is a script for 3ds Max, which is going to automate one of the processes. And there's the Bannerlord Hendrix F um, FBX, which has stored um, animations for the corresponding um, hand animations. And then it, you'll find the folder in there as well called Vanilla Hand Armor. So this is a community um, resource already. And inside you'll find an FBX with um, a mesh with corresponding animations already as morph targets. So that's that's my reference. Um, you'll find a, a little tutorial on how to kind of do that using um, specific Maya workflow, as well as sort of describing the, the process, what needs to be done. Uh, in summary, we have to make sure that our gloves meshes are using skin modifier to be skinned to the actual human skeleton, as well as having uh, morph targets or, or blend shapes uh, 25 to be precise, which actually create the, the hand animations which Benelord then, then uses. Um, so let's get to it. Now I'm going to demonstrate this on a, an example. Uh, in here I already have a have a mesh which is I've tested before that I know that it works. Um, this gloves mesh ha is rigged to a skeleton um, as well, the human skeleton. But uh, as you can, if I hide this guy, um, if you can see, there are no sort of hand animations. The skeleton, uh, by default, has no f um, finger bones. There's just a single finger bone, which doesn't really affect any of the meshes at the high LODs. It's only hand animation, uh, sorry, hand bone. So uh, all of that is then done um, with the uh, use of morphs. So um, I have a max file in here, which is uh, has the gloves sort of separated as an individual mesh. And uh, I would highly sort of recommend that you do this in a, uh, in a brand new uh, scene as well. So I'm just gonna get a new scene um, and I'm gonna import the, um, the Hanserik FBX. So Benelord Hanserik, if we bring it in, Make sure that you import the animation, uh, skins, morphs, you can as well. Uh, they exist in this FBX as a reference. So when we bring it in and we check out the outliner, uh, you'll see a bunch of sort of shapes um, which which we can hide. And in here you'll see hand M ref morph. So that's the mesh, the vanilla mesh with all the uh, morph targets. And as it moves, isolate this so we can see it better. As it moves, it switches the uh, individual hand animations. So this is the the, the, the target that, that I try to replicate using a custom uh, sort of skeleton. So if I just double click this, it's a sort of basic bone structure for fingers. And then each frame is trying to replicate that uh, morphed animation. So if we then take a look at the hand M ref rigged, which is using the skin skin modifier and is rigged to the finger bones. Um, you can see that we're trying to just sort of replicate whatever the, the morphed version was. Now, um, as you probably know, with bone animations, uh, any kind of harsh bends aren't going to be um, very friendly to, to the topology. Uh, but because obviously this is this is uh, quite a small area and it's it's not going to be very visible, something you can get away with. Um, depend, you know, if you're pedantic or you want to be very sort of um, precise, you then can can go in and clean up those those areas. Um, but again, as I said, this is just fine. So now that I have my reference, I'm going to get rid of the morphed versions. Um, I have my skin mesh and I'm going to bring in my uh, gloves mesh. I'm going to merge it in, uh, set and only the gloves. 
I'm gonna get rid of any skin anymore that I had there before and I'm gonna get the skin information from the um, reference rigged for the hands. Uh, for that, I'm using Skin Wrap in 3S Max. I'm sure there are some similar tools in Maya or Blender. Fortunately, I'm not a user of these packages, so I can't really tell you which one it is. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna pick the reference mesh. I'm gonna make sure that I weight all points. Um, so get switch to face deformation. Both works. Get it into skin. Uh, and now I have to do a little bit of a cleanup because this is now sort of mesh dependent. Um, as I scroll through, I will get a preview of how the mesh is going to deform. The um, hand skeleton has a root bone. So this is um, a bone that never changes. So to this bone, you wanna attach vertices that never never should change. Your, your gloves mesh should be as simple as possible to sort of help with optimization. Uh, but I know that there is a couple of vertices which are shown very sort of well and forming if you have any sort of hard surface areas you want to make sure that um, that these are cleaned up and these are deforming as as they should so this is just a sort of quick process um, if your uh, software allows it and has something like a mirror mode uh, that's incredibly helpful because you can just deal with um, with only one side and then uh, what we can do is just uh, mirror it to the other. So if we jump into a stage where it's quite deformed, we're gonna mirror it and it's going to be fine. Okay, so now that I have my skin um, on the gloves mesh fixed, I'm just gonna scroll through to make sure everything looks fine. And uh, now comes the tedious process where the paths will sort of diverge depending on what software you're using. Uh, I built a Mac script which should help you to automate the next process, the next couple of steps, because what we have to do is we now have to create um, a raw sort of editable poly mesh for each frame. So I would have to create a copy, um, convert it to poly, select my source, jump to next frame, create a clone or copy, get it to the poly and I would have to do this for all uh, of the 26 frames. So as you can imagine, that's quite a bit tedious, tedious job. So I put together a max grip, which um, should sort of automate this process. Um, now, one thing to, to mention is this is a, yeah, um, a max script. I'm not a Python um, user or anything like that, but if anybody else knows how to do Python, um, is capable of converting a simple max script into Python, um, would be greatly appreciated if that could be could be done and then shared with the community. But for the time being, this is sort of uh, Max exclusive. So if we go into scripting, and we're going to run script, we're going to navigate to um, our um, where the um, zip file is. We done it earlier from the link below. Um, jump and we're gonna load HMP uh, max script. So when you run that, nothing's gonna show up. It's just now being sort of loaded in. The way we can run it is if we go into customize user interface, and uh, depending on the version of the max, this will be, might be under different sort of naming conventions. We're gonna jump into menu. And we're gonna go into category and we're gonna find uh, Benelort. And over there you'll see Benelort hand morph processor. So if we just go into uh, one of the menus, we can just click and drag. We don't have to save it. If you want to for later usage, you can do that. Um, but we can close this. And then in scripting, when we uh, open that up, we'll see create morph target. This is a simple tool with a single button. Uh, what it does is it just sort of automates that, that process for us. A couple of conditions for that. We have to make sure that our timeline is, is, is big enough to um, to cover that, that last frame as well. So I'm just gonna adjust it just to be safe. Um, and we have to make sure that before we press this button, the rigged mesh is selected. So um, I have that, I'm gonna go back to frame zero and I'm gonna hit quit morph targets. So what's just going to do is now going to 
go through a loop where it duplicates the mesh, it converts it to a poly, uh, goes back, uh, selects the source mesh, um, skips to the next frame and repeats. Um, it's it's not super fast, but then again, it saves some time. Um, it's reliable, and uh, yeah, as I mentioned, if anybody has experience with Python or or Blender, um, you can open you can open that that max script file in any um, in any if um, Notepad editor or something like that, and and you can take a look what's happening there, and if you can replicate that and uh, share it with the community, that would be great. So now that that it's done. Um, that's perfect. I can close this. I should have um, my my rig mesh over here, and I also should have twenty six uh, editable poly meshes. So they have no um, extra skin information, and uh, as a pack, they're just gonna look like a ghosting um, ghosting sort of effect. Um, so now we're going to have to merge it to um, our sort of skinned, proper skinned mesh. So I'm just going to quickly save this as gloves morphs. And we can now bring these um, individual targets into our uh, file. So here's the max file opened up. Um, I'm going to merge those individual morphs in just those, I don't have the bringing the rigged mesh, uh, just the editable poly meshes. Uh, I can use scene material, it's fine. Um, so I have my gloves mesh, which is rigged to the human skeleton, which is used in game. Uh, so that one deforms. I've got no morpher or anything like that. Uh, there is probably a bug currently in 3ds Max, where if I go ahead and I add a morpher, uh, and I add those targets while there is a skin modifier applied. Um, it unfortunately doesn't export the morphs um, when I do it to FBX. So there seems to be a weird bug where you have to start with a sort of a uh, fresh, fresh uh, mesh. So the way I go about it is I right click on the skin, click on copy, I convert it to double poly, then I add a morpher to a sort of a clean geo, uh, load multiple targets. By default, it's going to filter to meshes with, um, filter to only meshes with the identical um, number of, of vertices. So I'm going to load that in and I'm going to right click and paste the skin modifier back on. So um, I can actually go ahead and then delete those. Uh, but if I move, it's still going to deform, and if I select the morpher, um, they are going to still be deforming just fine. Um, the color has now switched from green to blue because the references were deleted, but it's still stored inside this object. So don't worry about that. We can we can save that over. And uh, so I'm going to select this. Uh, this is now when when we sort of merge together with the Blender users uh, and the Maya workflows as well and we got to get it into uh, Bannerlord. So a couple of conditions for exporting. So make sure that your skeleton is selected as well. Uh, hierarchy shouldn't really matter. Uh, sorry, this hierarchy of the actual mesh doesn't need to be attached to anything. Uh, make sure that the hierarchy of the skeleton is maintained though. Um, and we're gonna export it out, just export selected. Now, when exporting, make sure that um, your morphs and skins are enabled. You don't have to worry about animation or anything like that. Um, and that the FBX version is something reasonable. You don't want to go like super high just in case the um, editor wouldn't support it. But obviously, don't go super low because some features might not be enabled. But um, yeah, export it out. Now, if you've done everything fine, um, you should get no errors. In case um, you have anything if you put the morpher above skin or anything above skin you'll get a message telling you that um hey uh, I'm, I'm not capable of exporting that out so any effects above skin modifier are going to be disregarded so just make sure that the skin is on top of the entire stack um so yeah let's get into banner lord so here we are in the sdk i'm just going to open up my um 
resource browser, right click, import new asset. When it comes to importing, um, you just have to make sure that your blend shape import is set to as morph animation. Um, in the vanilla hand armor folder, you will find the import settings saved as, um, as an image so you can reference that. Um, so just make sure you, you um, set that correctly. And then in terms of the mesh, you don't need to worry about anything in here. Uh, just when you set up your materials, um, any any time your mesh um, has a skin, make sure that all of its materials have skinning enabled uh, in the vertex layout of the material. Otherwise, it's not going to deform and it will look like your skin is broken. So just a little side note. Now the way to test this, that it's working, we're gonna go into Window Model Viewer. Um, by default, the way we would test um, if the models and, and, and armors are deforming, deforming properly with a skeleton, we would add a human entity, but with human entity, we cannot control or check the blend uh, deformers. So we gotta add a mesh. So by default, it's going to be an empty mesh. Uh, we're just gonna add our gloves mesh to it. Okay, and then uh, we should be able to go into animation uh, go to morph target enabled and then if we go one by one you'll see our hands are changing you can use a slider but as you'll notice when you go above 25 it disappears because there is no information for that um, so all of those morph animations are now stored into frames so this is how Bernard Lord animates uh, all of the hands, same for sort of uh, facial animations and this kind of stuff. It's all in, in uh, morph animations. We can then test if the um, skin is still working as well. So we're gonna we're gonna take an animation. It's still working. I'm just gonna control it, and then we'll see if it works with the morph enabled as well. There we go. We enable uh, morph target, and we can go through them just fine. So uh, yeah, we know that it's going to it's working in the SDK. Uh, let's just make sure that it's working in game. So uh, yeah, save all our stuff, and uh, I'll show you how to set it up real quick and test it in game. So to quickly test it in game, we're gonna make sure that um, cheats are enabled in the um, in the engine config in the document settings. Um, if you don't know how to do that, I recommend just just look it up, look it up online. Um, but uh, the way we, we, we test the actual mesh, um, we gotta have the cheats enabled so that we have control to global uh, inventory and all the items in game. Uh, I edit the, for testing purposes, the sandbox, uh, sorry, the sandbox core. Uh, so that's your Steam, Bannerlord modules, sandbox core, module data, and then SPR items. Uh, in there, just go into um, arm, armor XML. Uh, create yourself a duplicate, duplicate an item, and give it an ID, give it a name, again, name recommended with, uh, so it's sorted by alphabetical order so we can quickly find it. Uh, and then there is an important value that we have to make sure that it's checked and that is uh, in the item component, uh, covers hands is set to true. If this value is set to false or it's not there at all, um, the game will think that it's an it's arm armor where the base mesh should be visible. So if this is set to false or it's missing, um, the the blend animations will not work, and you will see the the base human meshes. So yeah, let me just save this, and uh, if you then load up Benelord, uh, not the modding kit, but just Benelord itself, and you open up the editor, um, you should see the mesh right there, and it should deform as it is. This tutorial was possible thanks to the Bannerlord Bonding community and the Kingdoms of Arda team. Make sure to check out the Discord channels in the link below.